Hi guys, it's Mark Zikri, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zikri of Space Command. Happy Juneteenth. And I wanted to talk about why Juneteenth is important and uh, so forth. Now, also, mark on your calendars June 28th because we will be having an all-day-long Space Command convention from 10 a.m. Pacific Time to 7 p.m. Pacific Time with Barbara Bain and Robert Picardo and Doug Jones and tons of people, Ian McKay, all guests, who will be interacting with the fans live and uh, we'll be showing the first hour of the show and the new two-hour special episode we've done during the pandemic. And so if you aren't there, boy, it'll be like missing Woodstock. So, but let's get back to Juneteenth. Uh, it's been very much in the news lately because of what's going on with Trump and Black Lives Matter and George Floyd and all of this stuff. And some people may think, well, but, you know, Juneteenth, I mean, you know, you know that's some celebrating something 150 years ago. No, <laughs> no. The moment you really start studying the history of racism in this country, you start to see that it's all part of a um, continuum and that it continues directly from that and before 300 years of slavery and then uh, institutionalized slavery under a different name that, that continues to this very day. And um, so uh, many of you know I came up with Far Beyond the Stars, which is a landmark episode of Deep Space Nine that deals with the issues of race and is very uh, relevant to Black Lives Matter. If you've never seen that episode, I strongly suggest you do. But also, uh, before I came up with that story, I was executive story editor on a series called Beyond Reality. And it was run by Hans Beimler and Richard Manning, who were two of the, the great producers, executive producers on Star Trek. Uh, the Next Generation, etc. And they were great bosses and always very open to doing things that were a little controversial. And so uh, I've, I'd heard some of the um, slave recordings, the former slave recordings that were done during the Depression. And, I, and NPR did a special where they had the oral histories of former slaves uh, um, that were recorded in the 30s. And they put together a special that I heard. And I was astonished because I never thought that I would hear the voices of former slaves talking about what that had been like. And it just was amazing to me and, and really blew me away. Now, many of you know that my wife Elaine was um, part of the Poor People's March on Washington and dealt, you know, with Martin Luther King and all that, that stuff. And uh, and so, you know, there's there's history and, and we won't go into that right here, but definitely, um, you know, and I grew up with Star Trek and Nichelle Nichols uh, playing Uhura and so forth. So race was very much um, I grew up with this, with all of that stuff in the you know during the sixties and and so forth. So when I heard that that um, documentary, I very much wanted to do something within a science fictional context. And uh, science fiction has, particularly published science fiction, has not been great in issues of race. Uh, during the fifties, there were essentially no black science fiction writers. Uh, you, you started to get some black writers in the 60s with Samuel R. Delaney and then Octavia Butler in the early 70s. And now there are many terrific writers who are of, of all sorts of racial um, categories and ethnicities, which is terrific. And, um, but, but in terms of televised science fiction, uh, you know, you have such wonderful things as The Big Tall Wish on Twilight Zone, which I, which I love. And, uh, and of course, Gene Roddenberry with uh, Star Trek really kind of broke, broke some barriers down. So that said, when I was executive story editor on Beyond Reality on um, USA Cable uh, in the 90s, I decided I wanted to write something about, about the history of slavery and the ripple effect of that to the present day. And our star was Sherry Belafonte, who at the time was a very famous actress and model. And her father was Harry Belafonte, who was, and still is, renowned as a singer and an actor and also um, a great civil rights leader in terms of um, marching with Martin Luther King and all of those things, just a phenomenal man. And so, uh, so I pitched this idea for this story, Asylum, which I'm now gonna show you. You can watch the entire episode right here. It was shot in Canada because that was uh, where they shot the show. And, uh, and I'm very, very proud of it. And, uh, and it's, you know, I think it's every bit as relevant now as it was then, and uh, sadly. And, uh, and so again, if you, if you um, are celebrating Juneteenth, great. If you can see something that you personally can do to make things better in any way, shape or form, just start treating people better. Recognize that, you know, anyone who gets the short end of the stick Anyone who's being treated 
as you would you yourself would not want to be treated, needs to be given um, consideration, and you really have to think about it and not and not just assume anything that you've assumed, and uh, you know you really have to say, okay, what can I personally do to make the world better, and take action. That's the only way it's going to get better. And uh, so you know these are amazing times in every way, shape, and form. But uh, but I hope you enjoy this episode that I wrote. Uh, a while ago, and uh, and again, remember Space Command's convention coming up. We're going to have another crowdfunding campaign. We st we're still selling Space Command shares at seventy five hundred bucks each. We've got our Patreon page, all that stuff um, you can partake of, and more. So that's it for now. We'll talk really soon. Thanks very much, guys. Bye. The following story of paranormal activity is based on reported incidents. <laughs> Pretty country. If those county supervisors follow my recommendations, they won't have to flood out every year. Are you okay? This is when he was brought in four months ago. He may be a good candidate for your reincarnation study. He has no memory of being a geologist. <laughs> Won't even answer to the name Stuart Mitchell. As far as he knew, he was Fountain Gibbs, a runaway slave from 1858. I've taken no strength from Mars David or no man. You kill me. You kill me now. Mars David? An old phrase for master. Thy stripes. He meant whip marks. His back was covered with scars. This is one week later. Do you know where you are? North. See that contusion on his forehead? He's had it for four months, but look. He went into a seizure and... The bruise is gone. You've got to help me. I can't fight him. He locks me away. No! No! 
I won't go back. No. Get me some help here. No. No. No, I won't go back. Sorry, sorry, ma'am. Didn't mean to scare you. But now, I got the reins again. As soon as his slave personality took control again, Bruce repaired. Offhand, I'd say it looks like multiple personality disorder. Doesn't fit the profile. The detail of his delusion is simply staggering. Like he actually lived it. Mr. Mitchell, I'm Dr. Stillman. This is Dr. Wingate. Doctor? Well. You seem surprised. You just don't look like doctors around here. Well, people don't always look like what they are. We understand when you first came here, you talked about being from uh, 1858? Yeah, I was one pretty sick fella. But that's all behind me now. Just want to head on home. Mr. Mitchell, I, I can see why you might feel guarded. Talk of being a slave could certainly convince the doctors to keep you here. And they'd be right. But that's not why we're here. We're paranormal researchers. We look into things that some people think are crazy, see if they might be true. So, what you want to do with me? We'd start by asking you some questions about what you remember, give you some tests. Tests? Well, nothing painful. We can do them in a the lab just down the hall. I don't rightly know. Maybe it'll help us to find out why this is happening to you. I'll think on it. But forgive me. I I'm a mite tired. Mite tired. Okay. Maybe we can talk later. Not exactly brimming over with trust, is he? Why would he be? He believes he's a slave. This doesn't sound like reincarnation, though. It's not like he's remembering a past life. It's more like he's continuing one. I'm not letting go now. I will not let... Somebody, please! I've gotten free, but he's coming! Help me! Hurry! We'll be starting with your earliest memory. Time Lightning hit the big house. And that was? The summer sometime, uh, 1829. Uh, oh, don't worry, it won't bite. He'll just tell us more. Would you mind taking off your shirt? Nothing for a lady to see. Tell me about the bad spells you get. Kind of go blank, I guess. Like being plum gone is all. And you have no memory. I seen blood enough to drown this world. You do what I say now. Open it. These don't need horses, I know. Make it go. Fountain, you don't know the world out here. You don't know how dangerous... Ma'am, I don't want to hurt you nor no one, but I ain't getting caught. Make this go!
described isn't in the lot. They must have taken it. God. Now, you lay back. You may have a concussion. I'm fine. So we won't sit around. Well, the police are putting out an APB. Now, is there anything he told you that might give us some idea where he's heading? No. That have food in it? You're gonna have to be sticking by me a while. Fountain. I don't know what you're planning, but it can't work. The police must already be coming after us. If I can get me some provisions, get into the country. Ronnie always smells like something burning. Can't see no hills. I'll always be running. Ma'am, if I was sent across all these years, must be something meant to be free. That white man let you go first. That's right. This is heaven. You can get any of this you want? Within limits. 30 years of my life, nothing but cornmeal and salt. And they'll ask you what you want either. Because you ain't nobody. Can't go nowhere, can't say nothing. And if you love someone, you can't be no use to them. The man we belong to. Chained us alongside his wagon. Walk us night and day through the snow. Jenny didn't have no shoes. Sickened up. He just left her where she died. Time. You're Stuart Mitchell? Yes. Yes. There's a man. I don't know who he is. He's keeping me prisoner. He's got a bruise. He locks me in a terrible place. But he's getting weaker. I just saw Stuart Mitchell. You do know what's going on. You're pushing him down so you can keep control. I don't know what you're talking about. No slave can outdo anyone, ma'am. Especially not no educated. Laura. My name is Laura. Look, I don't mind you fighting me, but please do not take me for a fool. All right. Yeah, but I don't know the how or why. I was crossing the Patuxent River. Paddy Rollers run me to ground here to split my skull with a rifle butt. Bam, I'm here. In the body of another man. If I let go of him, I go back to that river, that time. I don't know how I know, but I know. So you're keeping him against his will? Don't you judge me. Don't you judge a living thing fighting what drags him down.
law. You get me another one. I don't have keys. We can walk. That way leads out of the city. I could have left you back in the store, but I didn't. Why? I don't want to see you get hurt. Come on. Kill me, you devil! You kill me! You kill me now! I take a new trick to Mars, David, on you, man! You kill me! You kill JJ, me you've watched that tape a dozen times. There's got to be something. We can always get a line on this guy. If there was, we would have found it by now. When I was 12, one time my dad didn't come home. I stayed up all night, my imagination running wild. But somehow I knew it'd be okay. Was it? No. Land enough to get lost in. Make it there by dawn. Fountain. You've got to rest. And you look like hell. Yeah. Hmm. What's this place? I don't know. But it doesn't look like anyone's lived here for a while. Looks like home to me. Plank for a bed, board for a pillow. I used to dream about some place like that. Rolling hills. Dream I was a bird. Floating above it all. Just hanging in the air. If I go back, I'm a dead man. Are you so sure? You got all the way here, didn't you? Could you go back there if it was you? I, I hope I could. <laughs> Pretty lady, you don't know what you're hoping for. Man say you is dog, you is dog. Man say you crawl, you crawl. I can't live a slave. You're doing it to him. I'm sorry, but I can't live a slave. Is this freedom? To be someone else's master? Could you live like this? Go.
Miss Mitchell. I was just taking his report. You want to see it? We cover it all. Well, I guess I'd better be. It really wasn't all in my mind, was it? No. Our closest guess is that another man's spirit may have taken over your body for a time. The important thing, Mr. Mitchell, the important thing is I don't think you'll ever be coming back. Seems like a nice guy. I guess so. I never really got to know him. How you doing? I'm okay. I'm doing some digging. Copy of a writer's project recording from the 30s. Oral history interviews with men and women who'd been slaves. Some of them were nearly 100 years old. Terrible. Those were terrible times. So how did you escape from being a slave? Slipped off and ran like nobody's business. They caught up with me at the Patuxent River. Rifle butt near to split my skull. Oh, I saw crazy things for a time. Crazy things. But I flew away clear. Is there any name on that? Anonymous. <laughs> 